five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. going to do tonight um i'll t- as we, you know our friend um uh, will durst has uh, uh, been uh, ill and we haven't been able to do any interviews with him that we like doing talks with him of just chats that we do with him and so i thought i'd play one of the old ones tonight so that you will uh, get to see how wonderful uh will durst is and uh, how good he is at what he does and also because we miss the hell out of him, we hope he'll be back soon, okay? But here's an old one with Will Durst. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the wizened face of our once-every-three-week guest, Will Durst. Hi, Will. Good morning, Alex Bennett. How are you doing? Yeah, well, the fact is you're a political comedian. And, I am? Uh, yeah, and uh, every three weeks, things change enough that we have stuff we can talk about. <laughs> you know, uh, I love uh, something like MSNBC who day by day uh, tries to find something to gin up, you know. It's always breaking news. It's always, they always have that sign, breaking news breaking up there. News. That graphic, breaking news, yeah. it broke. Can't they come up with another saying? One of those networks should say, like, news that just happened or something. I don't know, you know. <laughs> But it, it, you, they need a new phrase. You're right. You know, it, it's it's endemic of our society where we take terms and cheapen them, uh, like star, star. We cheapen star. You know. I wonder where the first uh, example of using star to call someone of fame. You know, it probably happened on stage. In, no, well, in my memory, uh, the the one that comes out to me was MGM, who used to have as their motto, more stars than there are in heaven. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, but, uh, but it, it doesn't that, don't we have a tendency to cheapen things by doing that? You know, over and over and over and over and over yeah, again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or or the one I love, uh, I just I think is just terrific, is genius. You know, uh, oh, he's such a genius. Well, uh, it, you know, I think how, what would Einstein think about that? You know, um, oh, I understood uh, what what rose to the level. You know, I mean, everybody has a. I'm sure the architectural. Uh, trade magazines have their own standard for genius, you know, and uh, you don't really have to be uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, you know. Uh, I imagine other people, oh, yeah. you know, uh, art world. I don't, has anybody ever referred to me as a genius? I don't think so. No. No, I don't think I ever got that appellation either. Yeah, but you will probably if you get old enough or dead. Or dead. Uh, or dead. Yeah. Oh, that genius comic, Will Durst. Yeah, who was it that said uh, the two things that always accrue in stature are politicians, hookers, and bad architecture? That they always <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, that's kind of an offshoot of that old saying that uh, um, the only things that get good reputations with age are politicians and hookers. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So anyway, so so uh, 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 this is the genius Will Durst, I uh, and this is the genius Alex Bennett, yeah. the genius of, of uh, media, yeah, media genius. The, can you imagine, folks, just the um, uh, amazingness of the of the of the geniuses that are on your screen right now? Yes, the yeah. intellect here is overwhelming. But anyway, we we tend to cheapen terms. We tend to not give them the true respect they should have. 
Well, one is imitation. People hear something, someone described as a genius, and they want to jump on the bandwagon. They want their own genius, or they want to jump on the genius. And two, it's a lack of imagination. And three, it's expedient, because people need to uh, denote something really big, really fast, you know, make sure that they get all of their, and the responsibility is on them a lot of times, you know, forgetting this guy. Oh, he's a genius. You're going to love him. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, we, we cheapen terms in our society and now we've cheapened the term president. So I, I don't see any reason why. <laughs> yeah. You know. I keep looking for that joke, uh, that in America, any, anybody can become president. And now we saw how that worked out or, <laughs> Or, yeah. or Donald Trump proves it, or, you know, there's got to be, I know there's a joke there. There is a joke there. But you know why there isn't a joke there? This is really getting tiresome, yeah. scary, uh, off the wall. I mean, I just, you know, it, it's, I don't, you know, I've lived a long time, uh, uh, fortunately, knock on wood. I'm just sitting around here every day wondering what's going to get me. Anyway. Uh, and in all those years, I can only say there maybe was one other time that was as bad as this, and that was the McCarthy era. Ah. Yeah, when we had all those witch hunts going on and people being held, you know, brought before congressional committees, they'd be asked if they were communists or not, and if they refused to testify, they'd have a job the next day. You know, that was a pretty terrible time, and that was right after the war when we had that whole Red Scare and all of that. You know, obviously right. we don't have a Red Scare anymore. Our president calls one. You know, so uh, uh, it, 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 that was maybe as bad a time that I can remember. But then hop to now, and hell, you know, I wish we had Nixon back. Uh, or Carter. <laughs> or Carter. You know, Carter wasn't a great president. He was a great human being. Great well, human being. Lousy president. I think uh, I think James Comey said it best uh, that Donald Donald Trump eats your soul a bit at a time. That's good. That's yeah. very good. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is amazing. It is just amazing. And it is amazing how... He has so dominated the dialogue, you know. It's 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 not like the dialogue is oh uh, 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 what you know with Obama. Maybe you heard about Obama every couple of days. Maybe you know he just went and he did his work, you know. And if the work was good, somebody reported and the president today, blah blah blah. But the, Trump dominates it every single day. And these people over at MSNBC, at CNN, uh, and uh, to a lesser extent Fox, because they're sucking his dick, are just eating it, all, eating it up. They, be, they become the all Trump all the time networks. Yeah, they, they have become state-sponsored television, Fox News. Yeah. And uh, slowly... You know, but uh, the the pace has accelerated in the last two and a half years. I wonder if he, <clears throat> I wonder if he can keep this up. I wonder if there's a saturation point. I'm 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 exhausted. Yeah, fatigue. Yeah, I'm exhausted. Uh, you know, so so now uh, here's here's the question I have for for the comic. Okay, first of all, I want to ask you, who you think so far of all the Democratic candidates is would be your choice for somebody, A, who could beat Trump, but that's maybe a different question than, B, who could uh, 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 be the best nominee as just a nominee. Yeah. yeah, those are two different people. Yeah. I think Biden can beat Trump, and I think, uh, as, as she demonstrated when she uh, interviewed, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the little lapdog, uh, the 194th breed of the American Kennel Club, William Barr, the other day. I thought yeah. Kamala <laughs> Harris. Great job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who? Klobuchar? Are you saying? Yeah. Kamala Harris. Oh, Kamala Harris. Yeah. I, I, got a, I get a problem with Klobuchar's voice. It's always as if she's on the edge of not being sure of what she's saying in advance. And 
I got a problem with Klobuchar. I could not. Her voice could grate carrots. Yeah. So I I, I cannot. Well, go for, for, Plus, she's smart and mean. Let me go back to another. Making make another first question instead of the one that I did, and then we'll get to the others. But of all the ones that are running, who are the ones that should just get out right now because they haven't got a fucking chance? Andrew Yang. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I remember his name. Yeah, who, uh, yeah. I don't think Hickenlooper has a chance. I don't think Michael Bennett has a chance. Um, two guys running from Colorado. Maybe we should put them in a Thunderdome and say, you only get one guy from Colorado. Um, uh, I don't think uh, Eric Swalwell has a chance. Uh, These are names I haven't even heard. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. So and I mean, why? Uh, why? Mary Ann Williamson. I don't think she has a chance. Why are they in it then? Is I the question. I don't know. I don't know. I was thinking that. I mean, I may as well. I may as well put my hat in the ring. I mean, you know, it, 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 it. In fact, if you invited over all the candidates to my apartment, we it would fill it up for a party. <laughs> you know, I, that, I wouldn't invite that many people for a party. Okay. I think it's twenty one right now. I think it, it's is it up to twenty one? Yeah. But I mean, I keep thinking, Elizabeth Warren, yeah, get out. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I I think I don't think she's going to get the nomination. I don't think there's a chance in hell hey, she's going to get the nomination. Twenty out of twenty one of those are not going to get the nomination. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I I don't think she. I think she's wasting her time, her money. She could be better serving her constituency in Congress. Uh, oh. uh, Kamala Harris has a certain charisma. That I would say she should keep going, okay. Uh, Klobuchar, I, you know, yeah, I'm I'm on the edge as to whether she should get out. Um, quite frankly, I think Beto O'Rourke should give up. I, yeah, I don't. I think he'd be I, better served uh, to run for Senate in Texas again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yep. and how many? My question is, how many of these people are doing what they're doing as kind of an audition? You know, well, that always happens. For something that else. In, uh, yeah. That happened in the Republican nomina uh, uh, nomination process four years ago when when Scott Walker was, at this time, before the, 20, uh, before the 2016, you know, Scott Walker was leading all the polls. So, yeah, I mean, you never know what's what's going on. It's, it's uh, a lot of people are running, as you say, auditioning for vice president. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I let me also add... That uh, I think that the guy who surprises me, and he, you know, he was the flavor of the month for a couple of weeks. Booty gig. Booty gig. Yeah. yeah. Booty call, whatever his name is. Booty gig. Yeah. Booty gig. Uh, Booty judge. Booty gig. I'm thinking about that. He uh, has managed to not continue to be flavor of the month he's considered to be a good flavor you know he seems to be yeah, a, he seems to be becoming chocolate members. or vanilla what <laughs> he's actually jumped into the the top row baskin robbins yeah uh, he uh willie brown the former mayor of san francisco you remember him yeah i remember willie of course he said uh he was taken by uh uh booty gig and then he saw him a second and third time, and uh, he said the exact same thing and told the same stories, and it, the 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 petals kind of faded on the rose for him. Yeah, uh, but I think he's got. He is a stealth candidate in a, in that he has he tick off all the little things Box, on, yeah. the, on the chart and it's and being unwed, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, no, but I mean, like, for instance, two terms in Afghanistan. Yeah. All right. Where is it? Harvard? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, mayor, you know, he's been he's been a mayor of a town, so at least he knows administration, which is something, you know, Trump can't call him inexperienced, because if you want to talk about inexperienced, Trump is probably the most inexperienced president we've ever had. Um I just think 
there's very little that Trump can throw on him. I mean, he can't use the gay card. He can't say, oh, you know, hey, Ferry Buttigieg, give him some kind of name or something like that. You know, he can't do that with Buttigieg. And he can't... Uh, he he can't assail oh, him. Loafers, if you know what I mean. I mean, well, what can he assail him on? Uh, Buttigieg today uh, came out with a statement that uh, uh, America was never as great as advertised, which I kind of like, wow. you know, because I think it's true. I think we're very egotistical about America is great. Have you ever been anywhere else? I France is kind of nice, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, England, uh, they have some good medical care there. Then uh, go up to uh, Norway and Sweden. Those are perfectly idyllic countries. So to say that we're the best, you know, uh, America's the best, is um, I think he's right. I think it's not as good as it was advertised. We had slavery, you know. We had the Red Scare. Uh, we could go through a uh, tick off a whole bunch of of things that show that it wasn't as great as we advertised it. We had Nixon? Yeah. So that's the one thing I guess that Trump would go after. Yeah. But he couldn't go after his gayness. That wouldn't be unseemly. Well, we're talking about Trump. I yeah. th I think he'll do a, a dog whistle. There'll, there'll be some sort of, you know, offhand remark where he's, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink to all of his uh, his base and cores. Yeah. Uh, I just don't know if he'll last well, you know. Whereas Biden, you know, he's 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 uh, Biden long fight, and uh, the unions love him, and you know, all the East Coast and West Coast people, uh, all the elites, they it's different that because uh, in in the Republican Revolution, yeah. it was the base. That that rebelled against uh, the business guys and the religious guys. It was the base that said, "No, we want change." And and here it's the elites for the Democrats. It's the elites, you know. Yeah. It's all the the blue, the the heavy blues, the New Yorks and the Californias, and and they're the ones who want. Oh, we don't want the status quo. We want whereas the the Midwestern uh, co core of Democrats. Uh, the blue collar guys, yeah. Democrats, they want Biden because they trust him, and and they've seen that he's always worked with labor, and that he, they think that maybe he can work with the other side. They don't want the revolution. It's the elites who yeah. want the revolution. The AOCs, you know, who who demand change right now, and and let's ban cars, and and everybody gets a pony, and you know, it's it's the the, the middle class that. Kind of just tamp all that down, you know. Well, so I think I it's think it's gonna be an interesting fight. The exact opposite of the Republicans. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, I think in terms of, I mean, yes, I think he could give Trump a good fight. Okay. Yeah. Beto. Uh, huh. Beto. No. Or uh, Biden. 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 Biden, Beto, Bernie, uh, or Budakagig, Budakagig, or Budakagig, Biden, Beto, Budakagig, or Budakagig. Yeah, <laughs> I think probably part of the problem you see this perception here, and I argued this with my ex-wife Ronnie a couple of weeks ago that I I I I don't think when we talk about electability, we have to talk about Abil you know, ability, uh, history, whatever. Trump threw that out the window. There's right. a, a, an electability factor that has to do with charisma, okay, and that has to do with perception. Uh, the thing I like about Buttigieg, I think he looks young. He looks like he's ready to take on the day. You know, he looks like he could get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and work until 3 o'clock in the morning, you know. And, and Biden looks like he barely got out of bed. That's the problem with Biden. I think Biden looks tired. And do we need to, you know, and uh, this is ageist, but I'm 79. So going you on, get to be ageist. So I can be ageist. Yeah. He looks too old for the job. You know? Well, he's what, 74? No, he's, he, I think he's going to be, if he were elected president, he'll be something like, what, 78 maybe? I'm yeah, yeah. wrong. 
And Bernie is 77? I mean, Bernie is like, you know, he's in the dinosaur wing of the Natural Museum. You know, I mean... I mean, good news from his paleontologist, I mean, though. <laughs> what we, we have all these people, and what we come down to are the two old farts. And haven't yeah. we had enough old farts in politics for years? I think the perfect nexus of age and whatever was Obama. He was at the right age. That's the right age. He had the energy. He could, you know, it's a rough, demanding job. And, and I think he did pretty well. Uh, he was the second youngest president. Yeah, and and I think that was the for this century. Okay, that's the perfect age. Maybe in in centuries past, you could have a big fat president like Taft, or you know Coolidge, or whoever, you know, who looked like he was had one foot in the grave. But that was then, and this is now. Well, this is the day of television and social media and all those things. And what face do you want there? And I think. Young, any face other than Trump's. We, well, of I'll course. I'll tell you, but, any face other than I'll I'll vote for a child's beach pail full of sand if it's got a chance against Trump. Well, anything, <laughs> anything, anything, anything. But the the question is, uh, uh, are these people? I mean, like I, I like Bernie because he's a socialist, and so am I. Okay, uh, uh, I wish you were a Democrat. Uh, I, I, yeah, I like Biden because he's got a history, you know, of, of uh, you know, he's got a bad history, too. He's got that whole, uh, you know, what do you call it, hearings uh, for, yeah. Uh, he's got, but the reason he's got a lot of baggage is he's been around so long, he built up baggage. Right. Whereas uh, Mayor Pete has no baggage because... But he hasn't had time to, you know, what's his baggage? He got a C in math in high school or something. I don't know. That would be his baggage. So a, as you get older, as presidents get older. Um, uh, as candidates get older, as can, as they can, get more baggage. They yeah. get more baggage, yeah. Um, yeah. Biden's got more baggage than the first United flight out of O'Hare after a freak spring blizzard. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a lot of baggage. Uh, uh, what's his name? Trump didn't have a lot of baggage because we didn't know a lot about him. His business, his dealings were secretive, you know, all of that. So it wasn't like he had a record of voting for this and then voting for that. You know, I think... Well, you know, since they, he was for the war before he was against it. Yeah. yeah, and I think his bad time was taking out a full-page ad against, what, the Central Park 7 or whatever that was? Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, there were things there, but they, it, it, it's not like a politician who goes in every day and votes on stuff. Right. So you can nail them down on position. So he has, you know, a paper trail, as it were. Uh, now it comes the big question, because you're the, you know, this is your business. Which of all the Democratic candidates would be the best for comedy? Ah. Uh. Oh, Democrats are so boring for comedy because, you know, everything is, uh, is shaded and, you know, there's gradations. You know who, you know who said that before you? Mort Saul years ago. Oh, when, really? When Kennedy got elected, he said, my career is over. Uh. <laughs> you know, when he was making fun of the Republicans, they're easy to make fun of. Yeah. Democrats are a lot harder to make fun of. I had that problem with uh, during Obama. Really? It was hard to turn the Titanic, you know. Yeah. I had eight years of Bush and and Cheney. Yeah. And and that was wonderful. Okay, Man. so w which of these guys is the best for comedy? I don't know. I mean, you got twenty one to pick from. I know. Well, it's it's not going to be Marianne Williamson. Uh, I uh, I don't know who would possibly, you know. Comics, we get to know so much about these people, not mm -hmm. just through the candidacy, but when they become president, they're omnip um, omnipresent. You know, they're everywhere, and you get to. I mean, after after Nixon, everybody in America could do a Nixon impression. You know, oh, well, I am not a crook. You know, everybody in America heard that voice. Same thing with Reagan. Yeah. Reagan, people could do, anybody on the street could do a, well, and I see people doing Trump now. 
much better Trump than I can do. You know, <laughs> and that was George W. Bush. He just <laughs> so we get to know so much about these people. Well, here's that, here's the thing, and I I, I I asked Harry Shearer this about doing impressions once, and he oh no no not Harry Shearer uh, the guy who did Ren Ren and Stimpy. Um, um, uh, Billy uh, Billy West. I asked Billy West about this because he was doing he was doing uh, one of the Three Stooges as a young man, and then he was doing him as an old man. He says the harder impression to do is him as a young man. When you get to be an old man, you start getting a, you become a caricature. Your voice starts becoming a caricature, and it's you can do an older so and so, but you can, it's harder to do a younger so and so. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, uh, uh, the guy on the Second City, uh, Dave Thomas, used to do Bob Hope, and he had an old Bob Hope, and he had a new Bob, a young Bob Hope, and he could do both of them, okay? But he, it, the easiest one to do, according to Billy West, was the older version of anybody. So I imagine Biden would be easier to do an impression of, although I don't know how I would do it, uh, at this point, uh, better you could better do an impression of him today than you could do of Biden when he was younger. And so well, I, Buttigieg, I, they can't even do an impression of. Do an impression of Buttigieg. Hi, I'm Pete Buttigieg. You yeah. know? <laughs> Here's my husband. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hillary was uh, tough. You could never get, uh, at least I could never get her voice, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you're not a female. Uh, I, but I never heard a woman actually do her very well, although there was a woman on Saturday Night Live who, who did yeah, an Dan essence. Yeah, McKinnon did her. She, her but she job. did the essence. She didn't really do the voice, you know. That's why they're called impressions. Yeah, that's why they're called impressions. Yeah. But anyway, so, so, I mean, it really is... Uh, so there's nobody right now you would say that, that stands out as being that's, really good for comedy. <laughs> Not yet. No, we haven't get. You know, the first debate mm -hmm. is in June, and or debates because they're going to need two nights. I think. I think they're going to go for two nights. Yeah. Have ten on one night and eleven on the other night. Isn't it getting to be old though? I mean, that we're doing this so early. You know, it shouldn't. It shouldn't, it shouldn't start till till January. You know. Yeah. It's on about the same path as the Republicans had in uh, 2016. You know, a couple of debates, and then the pace quickens. Well, it's just that all the news outfits feel that it gives them news. So they push this thing earlier than it should be. I mean, and then we got to go, I guess, because we're, run, we're, run, we're running over our normal allotted time. There's no allotted time. This is the Internet. Um, that um, um, we, it, it, My idea has always been we do away with the primaries. Because all they do is cost the states money. If you want a primary, then you as a party should pay for them, you know, because you're trying to establish who your nominee is going to be, right? Instead, yeah. instead, everybody should say, I'm going to run for president. And they all go to the convention and they, they play games at the convention and somebody comes out the winner. Now here's our standard bearer. They're going to run. You could do that when the conventions happen. So you don't need all the primaries. All right. Save a lot of money. So, so how do you, how do you vet all those twenty one people want to give a speech at the convention then? Hey, it's their problem. It's the Democrats and who they're going to put up as their nominee, and they should not have to deal with it. We shouldn't have to pay millions and millions of dollars here in New York to hold primaries that only benefit their outcome. Okay, so we do away with the primaries, and there was a time we didn't have primaries in this country. Okay, so it's not unusual. Secondly, we don't start until those conventions, which is what? July, August, whatever. And then you have like about a three-month time in which people run for president, and then it's over and done with. We don't spend two years going through this and billions and billions of dollars. You're putting thousands of people out of work. What about the people with the bumper stickers? <laughs> the bumper <laughs> sticker companies. Yeah. Yeah. What about all those people? What about all the people at at the you know the poll workers? They get paid for going out and and having people wander into their garage. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're anti job is what you are. Uh, uh, in true true Alex Bennett style, I say, fuck them. <laughs> 
Anyway, nice talking to you once again, Will. This hey, has you been have a, a great week, Alex Bennett. I'll talk to you in a couple. This was a good one. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Will Durst. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I think now it should all work, actually. In fact, let me put this on because my shirt has a tendency to moray on smaller monitors. Moraying is when it uh, gets, well, it morays. No, right? Okay. Now let me open up the Skype lines. Uh, as soon as we open up the Skype lines, something happened, and I don't know what it was, but everything went out, and uh, uh, we went down. There were some weird things happening here on the computer tonight, too, before I went on, and I now I have no idea what it was. But now we have the ability to talk to people, so let's give it a try, okay? So if you're out there and you can call me and you want to be part of the citizen panel... Oh, uh, there we go. There we go. Here comes Josh Wheeler. Uh, Josh should probably come in where he came in last night, which is in, in the top spot. Let me see here. Uh, let me uh, go here. To, there we go. See, there's Josh. Hi, Josh. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Okay, everybody can hear me. You can hear me now. Okay. Thanks for calling back, Josh. I appreciate it. You know. Oh, it's no problem. You know, these things I happen. It's... Uh, uh, I should go out and I commit suicide now, I think, uh, you know, but, uh, we, we don't know what happened here. So we'll, we'll just uh, try and, you know, make the best of it. And now I hope other people call. Maybe Phil gave up on us. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, Jeff gave up on us. They were all calling. And yeah. I saw, uh, Charlie had called. Well, I get everybody calling. And I'm trying to solve the problem, and I, it, so it's like everything's coming at me at one time, and it's uh, it's maddening. It is just yeah, maddening. Yeah, I just uh, like I said there, I'll just hang up and stand by until you get it fixed and call yeah. back. I know Patrick said he's going to call, so I sent him a note and said, "You're ready now." So because yeah, he had yeah. sent me something and said sounded like a repeat was on, so I told him he had yeah problems. So he'll probably call. Yeah. But uh, anyway, the rest of you can call, though, you know, it looks like Phil gave up. <laughs> you should be able to send him a message. I'm sure he's hanging out well, waiting. I'm, I'm not going to send him a message, but he probably already sent me one, like, saying, do you know you're down? You know? Yeah. People do that, too. They go, do you know you're down? You know who was still up, though? I was still up on Facebook. All right. I saw that. Uh, yeah, that's how I found out. Yeah. Exactly what was going I, on. I was still on Facebook. Uh, there, there's, uh, and here comes Phil Meyer. Let me see here. There's Phil, and he'll probably come in in the. What, where, where was he last night? He was, uh, he wasn't in the second spot. Oh, there he was. Yeah, there we go. Here are. comes everybody. Okay, all right. I don't know. I guess I should reboot this computer about once every couple of days, and then this kind of thing won't happen. But uh, uh, hmm. come on. I'm looking for Facebook to come up now. Come on, Facebook. There you go. God damn it. This, uh, so something happened. I don't know. There was something weird happening on this computer earlier tonight. And uh, so uh, we're, we're, now, we're now okay. So uh, yeah. let me see here. Here comes, yeah. uh, here comes Jason uh, in the number four spot. Let me, uh, let me, <coughs> let me try and. Uh, well, working now. Uh, huh? Let me see here. Jason is in the number four spot, so I go with Jason. Uh, hey, uh, Josh. Alex. Uh, hold, uh, hold, don't bother me right. Don't bother me right now. Let me just. Oh, fuck you. Let me take care. <laughs> no, let me take care of this, Phil. All right. I was just going to tell you to call Charlie. He was no, on I, the same I, line I, with I, me. Let's see here. 3 a.m. Is that you, uh, Jason? Jason? Jason tried to call. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. My. Yeah. Uh, are microphone you? or speakers are doing something goofy, so I okay, made sure I put you on there, mute and then. There we go. There we go. Yes, Phil, I can't do two things at one time. <laughs> well, you know, I I was on the impression you could uh, pat your tummy and rub your head no, at the same no, time. No, no, no. It's uh, years past that now. Yeah. Oh, okay. You yeah. Know. Jason can still do it. Yeah, yeah. No, I can. I can still do it. Yeah. Wait a minute. Can you switch it up? You want to switch it up? You mean? Yeah, uh, you gotta, switch hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, oh. and then I can't do it. <laughs> there we go. 
Okay. It looks like you're trying to do it too many times, Phil, and you rubbed a bald spot. Yeah. Hey, you should talk. Just wait five years. Five, five years. years. <laughs> what do you mean? He's... Yeah, you'll be you'll be combing that shit up over the top of your head. <laughs> you know, he's got Latin genes in him. He's he's his hair ain't going nowhere. Yeah. yeah. What, what's that Julio Iglesias look like? <laughs> he's got hair. He's got hair. Yeah. It's a wig. The... <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it's in plates. So you say. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I, I don't know what happened tonight. I it's just everything went out. All my uh, my hard drives, which are external hard drives, just completely disappeared. And of course, I record to those hard drives to record the show, and the, everything went wonky. And um, the only thing I could do was reboot. Now that I reboot and get everything, I have to get everything going again. So that takes about five minutes or so. But anyway, so we're 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 in we're in good shape now. Yes, Jason. I want to make you feel better, Alex. Yeah. So the other day I was at work and I'm pulling out of a parking space. Mm -hmm. I look left, right, left again, mm -hmm. and I take my foot off the brake. I start idling out. But I'm paying attention to the right because that's the way I'm going to turn. Yeah. And there's other traffic that yeah. might be coming from that direction. Somebody was flying through our parking lot wasn't there a second before clipped my front end totaled out my car wow a truck no it's it was a dodge avenger just a car you know but it's because of the age of it it was a 2012 yeah did like seven thousand dollars worth of damage and that's what the car was worth wow but you're insured yeah so now i'm gonna get a check for a little under seven thousand dollars but now i gotta go out and buy a new car uh, whose fault did they say it was? Uh, I know it's going to be my fault because I'm coming out of two yellow lines. That's a parking spot. Mm. Yeah. But oh, this yeah. Guy had it to was have your been doing, front corner. Yeah, this guy had to have been doing 30 miles an hour in the parking lot because it actually, when he hit me, he scraped through half of his vehicle, too. Yeah, well, wow. Uh, 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 you know what I got? I got one of those cameras that you put in your car so that uh, you can see, you know, if somebody hits you and they blame you or the cop pulls you over and says you ran the light and mm -hmm. doesn't give me professional courtesy. Uh, the uh, So it's a... Um, I know uh, all you Russian camp. spies have that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a Republican thing. Yeah. yeah. But uh, do you have one of those? No. I, I thought about getting one before. You know, same reason that you did too, you know, watching all the Russian cameras. <laughs> it's like pretty sweet. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like, hey, you know, I might save my butt one day, and, but, but, and maybe I would have that, you know, because I, I swear, I, I'm, they, they even tease me at work and call me Mister Safety. How fast? And, how, uh, yeah, how fast did the insurance company settle with you? I don't know, it's basically as soon as the dealership took the car apart and said, you know, it's going to cost this much, and the insurance company said, well, the car's only worth this much, so it's told. Oh, okay, so you get uh, seven thousand bucks. What are you gonna do? You gonna get a brand new car? Are you gonna? I'm getting a new car. <laughs> yeah, I, buy a Dodge Avenger. No, I mean that that was a great car for me. I loved it. Yeah. You know, but it, it, you know, it's eight years old or whatever, seven, eight years old, and you know, somebody nails you like that and takes out enough, you know. But I'm uh, I'm gonna get a Jeep Compass. A oh no! Please don't do that. Why? They're nice there, little there, cars. There's a podcast. This it's called Scotty Kilmer. You know, uh, it's some guy in Texas that fixes cars for over 50 years, and I, I believe that he's a pretty honest guy. Uh, and this Scotty, he says, do not buy that car. His customers have nothing but problems with these uh, Jeep compasses. They're they're really poorly made. And just remember, who owns Jeep? Fiat. Fiat owns Jeep. Who makes one of the worst cars in the world? Fiat. You know? They're like now today the fourth largest car company in the world. It may so. be the fourth largest, but it's probably <clears throat> the first worst. You know? Oh, man. My, my uh, I got a lot of family that works for Chrysler. And, you know, my sister-in-law, she had one before. I, I'd seen it. I'd driven in it. And, you know, it's a nice little car. You know, it's. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've worked there. I worked there for many years. I mean, I was a line mechanic in a Jeep dealership for quite a long time when I was an automotive mechanic. I mean, Did Fiat I own, own two them Jeeps then? now. I don't, I don't own a Compass, and I'm not a particular like those. But, I mean, my wife has a Patriot, you know, which is the sister car to the Compass. But, I mean, I have a Grand Cherokee, but, I mean, I've had many Jeeps. I mean, 
So, I mean, I would, before I worked for SW, I worked for Diamond Chrysler. So, and, and then the thing I heard, it, it's uh, the, that and the, uh, was the Fiat 500, which is also the Jeep Renegade. There are a lot of similar uh, components. And I talked to a mechanic one time and he said, actually, that the Fiats are extremely easy to work on. I know. <laughs> Because he's a mechanic. Well, he keeps in, him busy. In, in, in Italy, the joke was it stands for fix it again, Tony. Yes. <laughs> you know. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really a big fan of Fiat. I mean, my, my issue with Chrysler the whole time yeah. I ever worked there was that was they were constantly trying every, you know, about once a decade, they were constantly getting themselves in bed with somebody else who would come in and tell them how to make cars. And then, you know, when it wasn't going so well, they would shrug that off and then go to somebody else. I mean, that was the whole thing about you know, Daimler Chrysler, when they were owned by the, you know, the, the Germans and Mercedes Benz, a lot of that stuff they sent over here, I thought was supposed to be Mercedes Benz was supposed to be so great. And I thought it was fucking junk. I think there was a big change up though, when they went to Fiat and Sergio Marconi got in there and he, you know, that was one of the, the biggest things you would always hear is never buy a first year model of a new vehicle because get, it's going to be nothing used but Lexus, Get a used Lexus SUV or something. Do not. <laughs> Do not uh, buy a, a, a Jeep Patriot. I wouldn't steer you wrong on this shit. You got to listen to Scotty. He, he got, yeah, you know. yeah. Listen to Phil. Go to YouTube. Yeah, Scotty to Phil. Kilmer. Uh, I and, go to uh, Phil on everything. But you should. <laughs> Phil has an opinion about what to buy and what not to buy, and, and, and so what does he sure say he about had your an opinion Toyota, on what was Phil? wrong with my computer? The Toyota tonight. FJ is worth almost what I paid for it in 2011. Mm -hmm. See, I have never crazy, had a cause... problem with it at all. Yeah, but you, you can say the same thing about a Jeep Grand Cherokee. I mean, the Jeep Grand Cherokee is the number one selling SUV of all Maybe time. Maybe the number one selling, yeah. but it's only worth about 50% of what you paid for it as soon okay, as you drive well, off I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you that that's perfectly fine, But and I can go upstairs and do this if you want. I can go upstairs and I can bring down my plaque to prove to everybody that I am still an ASE certified master automobile technician, and then I can bring down a couple more plaques that can show my 10 years of service spent in a Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep dealership, and I've had every single part on and off, every single Jeep made between the years that they came out up until Listen, the year that okay, I left. Okay, wait, wait, wait uh, uh, Josh, I mean, Josh? They have issues. All cars have issues. There's they just no have doubt. issues. I mean, if he likes the car, buy the car. <laughs> right. It, it, Jeep, actually, just because of the, the name, it, it actually holds on to value. Which yeah, I don't it, it, you with, have but. all those those credentials, Josh, but you don't compare to Phil and his opinion. That's right. <laughs> That's right, because I listened to Scotty Kilmer, and he uh, said, do not buy a Jeep Compass. He put a carpet in the first, first Jeep. I will be the first to, to admit, though, I mean, I started out doing that when I was 16. You know, I got in the apprenticeship and started working at a dealership, and then yeah. I continued to do that while I went to college. I mean, that's how I got in the skilled trades. That's why... Even though I have an education, I don't teach or anything because I got into skill trades, and then I got to where I'm at now, and I make so much more money than I would make if I quit to go teach that I've, mm. I've stayed in it. But I will be the first to admit that mechanics in automotive, but really mechanics in any field, there is no doubt that if you go ask 10 of them, you will get 10 different – I mean – you're not going to get unanimity. I mean, they're almost like doctors in that regard. I mean, Phil, you're not going to get a solid answer. When did you hear this anything. podcast? Oh, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're all the time. Uh, yeah. I, you say, know, I, know, I, I like I, Scotty Kilmer. And, uh, uh, that, if you show that guy again, I've seen that guy's videos, and he's a fucking lunatic. <laughs> lunatic? Yeah. Before, I, I, before you know, 2018, oh, the, the <laughs> compass that guy doesn't want you to buy any fucking car. Period. Yeah, he doesn't want you to buy anything but a good car. Okay. You know, <laughs> hey, Jeff's got his hand up. Yes, I Jeff. support. Guess who? Josh. Oh. Nope. Chef. Nope. There's somebody who knows Scotty, and you're absolutely oh, you, right. You, you know Scotty? Well, yeah, I've heard him a lot. Yeah, I think he's very good. I but, think he's the best. <laughs> but Phil, you also said says two non-mechanics. right? I said buy a used uh, Lexus You know, don't SUV. you don't you feel don't you feel bad, uh, Josh, uh, that you have all these diplomas and they're just no good in the <laughs> eyes of Scotty? Not really. I mean, 
beam me up. <laughs> the the when I left in two thousand, like well, right at the beginning of two thousand and six, the internet was, you know, becoming fairly more much more commonplace. Not like it is now, but the DIY stuff on the internet was getting pretty heavy. And I mean, and honestly, that's one of the reasons that I left is because, you know, someone would ask you for your opinion and then you would give them your opinion. And then, no, no, I, I read that uh, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, OK, I mean, you know, then sounds like, you know, what the fuck's up. So my shit runs good, motherfucker. I don't really care. You know, <laughs> you know what I just realized? I didn't turn on the uh, well, I know what I'll, I'll do later. Forget it. <laughs> what, what, is what is that? That was Scotty. So, where's that coming from? Thanks, God. It came from Scotty. Oh, can see oh, oh, that's on. annoying, Phil. Right. Anyway, uh, uh, no, I just realized I hadn't turned on the audio, <laughs> the the, uh, the uh, internet broadcast. You know. Hello, everybody. How Jeff, are you? you? You listen to Scotty, and what what did you say about the Lexus uh, SUV? You don't like? Well, I I had two of them. Yeah. And, uh, they were great. Yeah. They were absolutely great. Hmm. Yeah. If uh, if I have to buy another car and I don't plan on it, uh, I'd get a Lexus. Oh, you like and Toyotas? My, my yeah, I do. <laughs> they just got a. My granddaughter, uh, a Lexus, a used Lexus. That's well, great. Phil, but Phil's right about everything, so I, I'm, I'm. Yes, I you, am. Yeah, yes, of course. And you were so. Hey, you're the guy that's taking a bus, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I took a long one today too. I took one that was. Uh, y y yes, uh, yes, Jason. So you know, you know, I work for a, a large communications company. I was doing a job for this old timer. And he had to, you know, he was in his 80s. He's like 85 years old. I'm, you know, he's not home yet, but I'm in his driveway, there's a Toyota minivan in the driveway. Mm -hmm. And then he pulls up and he's in this Volkswagen car. So I go up to him like, you didn't fight in the big war, did you? <laughs> he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you, you got a Japanese car here, and then you pull up in a German car. He obviously didn't, didn't fight in World War II. <laughs> he busted up laughing so bad. <laughs> Oh, then he uh, complained out well, on you. you know, Phil is uh, is right about everything, including his assertion the last oh, I don't know two weeks or so that this vote would never come to impeachment inquiry. <laughs> Didn't you say, say that, Phil? You said inquiry. that it wasn't. You said it, you said. Wait a minute, Phil. Listen to me. You said it wasn't going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. No. It, you said it wasn't going to happen that this vote was going to going to happen. No, no, I said they would not vote on impeachment. All this is is a shit show. And that vote meant nothing. What do you mean? It Phil, meant that Phil, finally, you're about the process. finally this meant that they're talking about process. an inquiry. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Inquiry. Phil, shut up for a second, will you? Jesus. You don't want to challenge me. <laughs> no, I I would like to tell you that what this is uh, all about now is that your your guy has a chance to defend himself. You wanted no, due doesn't. process. That's what this is. This is due process. This is no, how things no. work. No, this is not. It a is. It, it's exactly due process. It's not it's an impeachment. Uh, it, it is. It is the steps not, that you go to through no, impeachment. This is not, Phil. You this do is not an inquiry. And, and, the, and the president and his people are going to have a chance to present their information. And uh, there will not be it will not be in closed hearings. It'll be in open hearings. This is everything right. the Republicans have been asking for. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, this is the stage at which the police are going out and investig investigating a, a crime, and that's always done in closed quarters. That is never done out in the open with everybody watching. But not that's when what it's this a kangaroo stage court. Well, no, the oh, new the, no, it isn't the a court kangaroo court, court Phil, Senate. because court the, the president Senate. will be a, okay, Charlie, the president and his people, Phil, <laughs> the president and his people will be allowed to appear and to present their evidence. So, so it isn't a kangaroo court. Yes, Jason. So, Phil, you know I love you. You, you, you know I. I'm There's doing no this reason jest, to love but, him, Jason. There's no reason. I, I, I have to say this because I think it's funny, and like I, I've always wanted to say it to you. Does your ass ever get jealous of all the shit that comes out of your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know, it's 
Yeah. It's it's uh, unfortunate that you guys all have these blinders on and you can't see oh. the Blinders, truth. you're the one lying from your ass. <laughs> it, it, it's the due process. That's the way things work. No, it's not due you know, process. How, how long did it take to impeach Nixon? And they cross examine. Phil, how long did it take to impeach Nixon? Didn't. What was Nixon's <laughs> approval rating before they impeached him? It was pretty. It was. It was very pretty high. It, no, well, his, I, well, his, his was, approval rating before the impeachment was pretty high, very and high. it was because of the impeachment that took over a year to do that people started saying, "Oh shit!" And it's the same thing with Trump. Nah, yep. this, this is just a shit show. It, and it's There's actually no it's moving a little faster. There's no crime. There's no crime to say, hey, my government voted to give you this money, but I'm going to hold oh, it up until God. you give me he dirt on my opponent. He didn't hold it up. He just said, yes, hey, he, you look he into did. this. And then where did this extra, what was it, $140 million come from? Uh, Biden's son. Yeah, no. It came from Trump. For what? Trump actually put in extra money into the Ukraine. Trump put in money. Yes, for yes. Where, where, where did this extra, where, where did this, this extra money come from? Look it up. Look up the facts, Phil. The yeah. the Congress uh, uh, voted to approve so much money to the Ukraine yeah. that Trump held up, and then after the end, when he released it, he actually released more money than what he was allowed. Yeah, because to. he was making sure that there wasn't, he wasn't donating money to a corrupt government. Mm, so then he gave him more money when they said. Okay. And, and by the way, Phil, the dog also ate his homework. He didn't have any any word in it at all. Congress donated it. Yeah, no, no. Trump wrote a check. Jason said so. No, I said that Congress voted and approved money to give to the Ukraine, and then Trump held it up until he said, we'll give me see, dirt on my opponent. We'll see when the real facts come out oh, yeah. and not the mm -hmm. uh, leaks that well, yeah. you're getting from okay. Nadler well, and Ship. Yeah, well, uh, Nowhere in the Constitution does it say the president can decide to withhold money that Congress votes. That is not in the Constitution in any but the fucking president, place. Well, the president's responsible to give money uh, and not uh, uh, give it to nations that are corrupt. Even though his advisors already told him that the corruption was already done with and that you should give him the money? Even because you're actually sitting there to fight. Your, his advisors corrupt. were as corrupt as he as the uh, donation. <laughs> so who appointed his advisors? He did. Yeah. So yeah. it's his own corruption. <laughs> Only right. the best. Only hey, the best. Jason? I want you to enjoy that Jeep Patriot, you know, it, 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 a compass. It's got your name on it, <laughs> you know. I, I hate. Well, you enjoy you that believe... Lexus in jail because that's where Trump's going to be. Nah, nah, I, I, that ain't going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Well, you, you know? said this was. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Phil. Phil, wait a minute, Phil. Phil, Phil. You said this wasn't going to happen. Yeah. No, I said that. They did he weren't say it or didn't he say it, Charlie? On an impeachment. Charlie, they did he or did he going? not say it wouldn't? When I said a couple of days ago that they were going to yeah. be voting on this thing, and you said, "quote," and I'm I can go back and find the the video. You should go back and I, find I'll it. I'll find the video where you said this it's not. That's thing. not going to happen. Yeah, and and, that was and, back and, and when nothing the, has happened. This is that was nothing. Back when the Republicans kept saying, "There's never been a vote on it. There's never been a vote on it." Well, they haven't had a vote. The they only vote they had is to is to ha is to continue this investigation. No, to bring and it out, bring it out into their, the open uh, and set up a and set up be. a set of rules for the investigation and so on. This is part of the process, Phil. And you said this Due would not process. happen. You said it wouldn't happen. We'll see. Why don't you find that what recording? Do you mean? I will find it. <laughs> Can you I, find it now? No, I can't. I don't have time. <laughs> Yeah. What, what do you mean you don't have time? I have enough work to do We're after the show here. trying to find yeah. audio of what I just did because I did wasn't recording the audio of it. So, I, All know, right. I have enough problems, Phil, without having to go look at vi for video of you saying it. And I c it wouldn't take that long because you said it dozens of times. All right. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll see. Yeah? Okay, I'll find it, Phil. Yeah, you, you better make a PSA out of it. A PSA out of it? Yeah. Why? You know, like uh, your uh, announcements, your well, commercials. Those aren't PSAs. Well, they uh, are because they're it, not making if, me any it, money. It would but. be if it was my voice. It's PSI? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm honestly, I don't know why, if they have overwhelming evidence of Trump's innocence, 
like Giuliani claims, I don't know why you guys wouldn't be rooting for a trial. It would be a perfect opportunity to humiliate the Democratic Party. Yeah. The and they they were been, until they took a vote. <laughs> they, they have been humiliated time and time again. And the, let them have their trial. It, they're going to be humiliated again. <laughs> yeah, I keep believing that. Yeah. Remember, now, Remember Mueller? Morning, Alex, oh, the Mueller said, report. They're going to be humiliated again when we again. rub his face in that later. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I support my people. You do? Yeah. Who's your people? Even when they admit to crimes. Yeah, you support them. Even <laughs> he when they didn't admit, admit to, to anything. Bullshit! He admitted to all kinds of crimes. No, you're saying it's a crime. I say what he did the, was a good thing. The federal <laughs> statutes say it's a crime to ask any foreign <laughs> government to... And interfere with or to to, uh, to investigate your political opponents. Oh, you Federal got dirt on Hillary, Russia? Russia? Let's have yeah. a meeting. Yes. You know, if you give them, we're, anything. we're gonna. Well, they'll get to the bottom of it. And the IG, uh, uh, who is working with the Senate, uh, when they start, pro uh, uh, you know, arresting guys like uh, what's his name? Not Nadler. Yeah, Nadler and they're gonna Shep. arrest Nadler for what? Well, because he. Uh, he uh, made statements that he had proof that uh, Trump colluded and uh, did a whole bunch Trump of other has stuff. Lied Thirteen thousand times. It doesn't Lying matter. Is that a what about ism? It doesn't matter. That's another what that's about ism. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's, well, that's well because he did this. He Phil, what, Phil, you, Phil, you can't. You can't. You can't, you can't, pros you can't prosecute. You can't, can't prosecute a federal official for making a statement about another oh, public yeah, official. Okay, and and and, and uh, uh, your your boy Trump has it all wrong when he says, "Oh, I'm going to impeach uh, so and so in the Senate." And you can't impeach too. senators. You can't impeach senators. It's not uh, written. We'll in see. The, you can't. Don't you? You know there's the no. Well, there's Senate no. We got a bunch of guys with guns. There, firing squad. there is you know, no. What, your wall around Colorado. Uh, there, there <laughs> is no provision. Only the House can institute impeachment hearings. The Senate has no authority to impeach shit. Yeah, but on the other well, hand, in 2020, when P when Trump is not, he may get, you know, they can impeach him over a parking ticket, but the Senate won't convict him. And in 2020, when he's reelected, yeah, well, and, and the House turns him. Republican because they get rid of those do nothings, uh, you know, then they do can start nothing. going after There's those. There's 900 guys. bills sitting on McConnell's desk. Don't talk about Democrats as do nothing. Well, you know, he's a little overextended. Maybe he can put it on MasterCard. Let me put it this way, Phil. What's going to happen here, okay, is that Trump is safe as long as his approval rating with Republicans is over 50%. In other words, over 50% say we don't want impeachment of Donald Trump. Now, hold, let me finish before you open your big fat mouth, okay? Let me finish. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, Trump is safe as long as the Republican is over As, as over long 50%. as his, his, the, the uh, ratings, uh, the approval ratings of 55% of, uh, hold in the Dem Republican Party. The 55% say he should not be impeached. 44% say he should be, or they should go ahead with the impeachment hearings. If that goes below 50%, you're going to start seeing so many Republican senators running for the exits that you won't be able to believe it, Phil, because the only loyalty they have to Trump is that he holds that 55%. Yep. Even two Democrats today voted not to continue with the hearing. Well, because they didn't believe in it. That's fine. It it's fine. You know, yeah. they weren't breaking with party line. Well, they one Democrat and one hey, who was a Republican a that of, went independent. There, there are a lot of Democrats who don't believe, uh, who for a long time did not believe in impeachment, and I think there are some who still hold on to that. I think there's some who voted yes today to go ahead with this to allow the process to happen. Okay? Well, the process doesn't mean that he's going to be impeached. Just because there's an investigation, Phil, you, you, what you do you claim, when, when, when you he, claim guilt when, Phil, through Phil, accusation? Phil, Phil, Phil there, of course, there's no. guilt through accusation, and the accusation, uh, oh, that, what, what, what else is an indictment but an accusation, Phil? Yeah. 
but in being indicted it, Phil, is not being. Phil, uh, what more is an indictment? They're that, either going what, to impeach him or they're not. What more is an indictment than an accusation that you did something? Well, because an indictment is usually based on fact. Well, this is based so on it fact. Impeachment. Maybe you don't think it's based on no, fact. No, because you can impeach a guy because he wears yellow socks. And you can in, you can indict a yellow pages. That's and that's exactly thing. what they're trying to do. And then you can also lose your entire party's election. So I guess, you know, and you got to look at that's what the Democrats so. are going to do. But I don't think if it's going to happen that way. Yellow pages, what would Aren't you, you guys say afraid? Say, well, I'm not going to have a trial. Aren't you guys afraid? You, that you know the Democratic Party is going to be ripped apart and destroyed after this election. No, no aren't you afraid the Republican no. Party is going to be? The Republican Party. Uh, uh, okay, well, there's, we're there's at an enough, impasse here. There's enough Americans who still have pride and traditions and everything Phil, of our country Phil, and what we stand Phil, for. Let me let me let me get a get a quote from you. Are you saying he will not be impeached? I don't think he'll be impeached. No, That's you don't. Correct. You don't say he will you be impeached. Definitely. You, no, you've been more adamant. Think. You've been more adamant about that every other time we've brought it up than you have been well, just I, now. I gave it some thought before I said I don't think he's going to be impeached. Okay. What you uh, gave uh, something thought here. before you said something? Every, everybody <laughs> at, remember this, this shit show at, is not an impeachment. At, at eleven uh, seventeen today, <laughs> he said that. Okay, so I can go back and get it. That when and the impeachment Halloween. takes place, I can go back and... Yeah. Hello, yeah. Patrick. How are you this evening? Hello, <laughs> Jeff. How are you this evening? Hello, I'm Tony. Good. How are you this evening? I'm good. Voting to impeach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you doing, Patrick? Just Fine. peachy. Just peachy. Yeah, no complaint. Yeah. No, he's in peachy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Jason. So I, I have to ask because I live in the house. Who all handed out candy this year, and did you have a good turnout or no? I had I we, we had one Zero. family we had one family that came by and we That's gave you candy. Wow, yeah, uh, it's like rainy and windy and crappy here. Yeah. Cold. Yeah, that we never stopped me. Well, I live it, on was, it was like rainy and windy. It was rainy and windy and crappy here. But we live in an apartment house, so you would think they would stay in the apartment house and go get the candy from everybody else. They never get to the eighth floor. Every year, Marjorie goes out, buys candy, and it sits there and rots for a year. Yes, we Patrick. Probably, we probably had like mm -hmm. 12 people. Patrick? Well, I got a lot of kids. We, we have global warming happening here. Um, I woke up to stick into the snow. <laughs> Um, so there was no trick or treat here. Most of the areas canceled and are rescheduling for this coming weekend. Uh, so yeah, it it was about 31 degrees and six into the snow this morning. So wow. there wasn't shit happening. Wow. Um, and we had 50 mile an hour winds, which is like unheard yeah. of this time of year. Yeah. Well, I saw. I was walking down the street. Everybody. Everywhere I went, I went to the chiropractors today, which I think it's going to be the last time because I just, you know, it. it I think it's money I'm pissing down the fucking. It's like a donation to his retirement. <laughs> yeah, probably. exactly. He's a nice he guy and all of that, but you know this idea that well you got to come back more because if we wait, you, if we don't do it twice a week, it, it's going to go back to the way it was. Yeah. And, and, you know, I don't get that from my normal doctor. He says, here, take these pills and you get rid of the infection. Anyway. Uh, 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 hey, the pills haven't been helping your back, though, have you? Because you finally broke down and went oh, to a chiropractor. Oh, actually, the pills, these pills, the uh, uh, cyanide, li li <laughs> the Lyrica, the Lyrica has been doing okay. By, me. Yeah, right. by the way, I think you interesting. get a teeter hang ups and hang upside down it, and do it, some sit ups. Interesting, just side story. You know, once every three months, I pick up all my drugs because we do the three month thing because it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. And I'm paying less for three months than I did for one month in the old days going to my local <laughs> pharmacy. And the most expensive drug that I had was the Cialis or Tadafil, is the wow. generic term. Yep. Uh, and it was 125 a month as a copay. All right. Today I go in. Five it's, milligram. It, yeah. I went in today. It dropped down to 50 bucks. Ooh. I, I, nice. I saved 75 bucks. 
Now, I don't know if that maybe my uh, out of pocket was over with or something like that, but Marjorie says hers hasn't gone down and she has more drugs than I do, more expensive ones. So I, 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 it went down 50 bucks, it's 75 bucks. So I went. Are you buying that from uh, Costco? No, no, I'm buying it from, uh, uh, from Walgreens uh, for yeah. Community, it's called. It's just nothing but a pharmacy. And uh, my plan uh, says I have to go buy at Walgreens because Walgreens can, is the one that is uh, empowered to do this whole thing for, what's the company, Express? Express the drug company, your farm, your, the pharmacy your drug company owns. Well, no, no, no. Uh, Express Scripts is the company, and uh, they don't own Walgreens, no. There, there's a pharmacy in Canada that uh, my ex told me about. Uh, it, it's I, f I can't remember the name, but it's uh, the price of those drugs. I'll get it for you and text it to you. But uh, I looked at uh, some diabetes stuff, and it was like a ten twenty percent of the price. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, you can it's you can you well, know they, but, you well, give them your prescription. I'll, I'll tell you the same thing's true. The same thing's true of Express Grips. I mean, I'm paying for one month. Incredibly less than I was for three months. Incredibly less than I was paying for one month before. I can't mm -hmm. remember the name of this pharmacy, but uh, when I do, I'll text it to you. Well, best you thing should, to do you is, can go online and you can look up the drug, and they'll tell you what their price is. Best thing is to go is with Express Marijuana? Grips. Uh. Express <laughs> Grips and go with their plan where you buy three months at a time. It's going to be a lot cheaper, Phil. Uh -huh. how, how much is betting on that website? Send that book. Yeah, send me that book. How, uh, you can only what, get the Chinese the stuff. Of Percocets running nowadays. I, I'm paying five dollars a pill on the street. So if you can only get the Chinese yeah. stuff, yeah. and uh, you got to get it through the guy okay. coming over with a backpack from Mexico. So anyway, yeah. Je Jeff, say something so we know you're alive. I'm alive. I'm oh, talking. Uh, oh, okay. I just want to make sure. You know, Tony, no. say no. something so I can make sure you're alive. Happy Halloween. I still got a little candy left. Oh, did man, you, the weather is Did terrible. you make bags for the kids next door so they didn't come over you? How many kids came to your door I, tonight? I had a lot of kids. I bought a lot of candy. Because you're in a neighborhood. I, yeah. Well, no, we don't have to see the candy. Yeah. Well, if you know, he shares. Well, I'll show you hey, Tony. We These little kids next door. So my mother bars. says, let's make the kids bags because we watch the kids sometimes. So they went to a kitty party. So... When they come back, we gave them like chocolate. We made them bags. You up. take the razor blades like, sure out of the apple. Them the same amount. Yeah. Well, you see, thing Tony, because if the little one gets more than the other one, Tony, you know, do you take so, the yeah. razor blades out of the apple? Oh, oh, my and mother, you don't give them away. No, my mother used to throw the candy out when we went trick or treat. When we came home, we were right in the garbage can because they were sticking razor That's blades. That's what she, she told you, but she really ate it. No, she threw them out. She, we actually she we handed out the full size candy bars this year. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're the you're the one promoting diabetes in Detroit. Yeah, my house is like the sugar house. This on this block. Well, you know what, Marjorie, when she went to buy candy, figured you know it would be a good thing if she bought sugar free candy. I think parents <laughs> parents would oh, probably yeah. like that a lot. You know, you cannot buy Halloween candy that's sugar free. You know, you all the stuff that would take it. Well, no, they wouldn't candy. know. They wouldn't know. The, they wouldn't know the difference. I they gotta get tell hardened you. arteries I and knew. die. Huh? Yeah, I had a hard time finding the candy corn for my mother. I was going nuts looking for it. You give them Hall's mentholipsis. I had to go to CVS <laughs> for it. Yeah, but, uh, but and then they, they, they sell you these giant oh, bags shit. of it, expecting that every. I got a little one for like six bucks. Y yeah, you you know, I mean, it's it's just. Um, you probably can buy enough so that you don't, you know. You freeze it? You, no, you, you freeze it and use it next year, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd make it the next year if it was in my freezer. Yeah, no, because, I mean, we, we have two of these. We, we've got, you know, we these kids came over and we just piled their thing full of candy because we knew that we weren't going to get many people coming up, so... And you and got then, one family, then, right? Then Marjorie I said, oh, I hope we don't have anybody else coming up because we've just gave given them all the candy we have. And I said, <laughs> don't worry about it. And we sat here and sat here and sat while well, we were watching something. But we we waited and waited and waited. And uh, yeah, yeah, but adults it, come by, Alex, looking for candy. The old, old, older kids. Huh? They you know what you do? Awesome. I just gave the, I gave them M&M's. Because I, at 7.30, 8 o'clock, I was getting close to the end. So whoever was coming at the end, I was getting three or four 
of stuff just because I'm going upstairs after this. I said, I'm running Three up. Four, two, two, My mother's like, like, you wait you till you the, the kids go bed? down to the corner? Yeah, I'm not going to Seed Town to get another bag of kids. I remember one, you one, you wait till Halloween. the kids get to the corner, and then you say, give me the bag, kid, and then you run off. You know, no, they gotta you know. I got three big bags from Costco, the big ones. I kept some for myself, though. I put a little pouch. <laughs> I got it over here. I got, like, the Hershey bar. When I'm watching the football game before I had my... So let me get a Hershey. I was watching the 49ers. <laughs> Next time we see Tony, he's going to look like Phil. I'm going to have to go to the gym. I <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm good. I'll just monitor myself with it. But the chocolate is my vice. I love Hershey's chocolate. Yeah. You should give some to Alex. He gave it he all like, his candy away. He likes the candy, though. You, you like the candy. You kept some candy, Alex, I bet. I don't eat candy. You don't eat no candy? I eat sugar-free. Oh, I could see Phil chomping down the Hershey's, too. <laughs> I can't Don't have it in the house. Good stuff. I can't uh, have it in the house. He's a diabetic. Oh, it'll spike right up then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're off the bend. So, uh, you know, uh, but anyway, um, mm. where was I? Candy. Um, no, uh, uh, years ago, I uh, uh, it was Halloween, and I didn't have any candy or anything. So he said, what am I going to do? And, uh, you know, it's trick-or-treat. You don't necessarily have to give candy. Let them eat cake. And I, in those, those, in those days, I used to get tons of records, you know, from the record companies. They would send me every release that they had. And, not for and, sale. Right? And, and when they were the ones I didn't want to keep or doubles or whatever, I put them by the door. Okay. <laughs> and I finally had a pile like this of these things. And so when people on Halloween came to the door, I gave them a couple albums. And they were delighted. Hey, I got an album. Look what I got, an album. And they left. And about 10 minutes later, be a knock on the door. Do you have anything better than this, like candy? <laughs> that would be me. I have this. I need a candy. Yeah. This guy's giving records out, Ma. This is a chip. <laughs> yeah. That's the cool thing in our neighborhood. Some people give out uh, uh, potato chips and different things like that. You know, it's nice sometimes. Well, I, I just think that... You, get, you know, giving out chocolate is not the best. Candy is not the best idea in the world. You know, I think it's unhealthy. I signed up for uh, for twenty five dollars a month for unlimited uh, testing strips to test your uh, glucose. Uh, you know, for diabetes. Mm -hmm. So next year, because I have unlimited strips, I can give them out at Halloween. Yeah, right. <laughs> Test even <laughs> Hey, use, use this. Card, go. <laughs> You'll know if you're eating too much of that stuff. <laughs> he comes in, he's all chubby. Huh? I don't even have to give you the strip. We know what this is going to read. <laughs> but anyway, boy, uh, this has been a short <laughs> show tonight <laughs> this so far, and but it feels like it's gone on forever. I don't know why. Hey, uh, any word on your storage unit? Oh, it's yeah. fine. Oh, yeah. Damien uh, wrote me tonight. He's going to be back on the air tomorrow night. Everything's fine at the storage unit. So, oh, good for you. Yeah. So, you know. Um, it's just smoldering. I has, have to still <laughs> keep paying him every month, so you know. And, wh and well, when do you, you see know, your three uh, doctor there? What? When do you see your urologist? Oh, that's on uh, Monday. Yeah. You're now, three thousand miles away. You're paying one hundred and eighty dollars a month. Why would he tell you the place burned down when you're still <laughs> sending a check? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Never been better. Check. Nice of you to ask, Jeff. Uh, yes, it's Monday. It's Monday. Monday. All right. Monday. Monday. Well, no, it's Sunday. Yeah. So anyway, uh, <laughs> Good Phil know. is in control in the stars unit. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. So, um, oh, that's about all I got. You know. I mean, that's it that's, you know. <laughs> next is the intersection I, i'm sitting around worrying about that test on you know they're going to see the doctor on monday but it'll probably be okay. who fucking cares? thinking about something everything will be better well i will probably yeah. have prostate cancer it's just a matter of they what can't kind. tell that unless they do a biopsy even if he feels it and he feels a you know some sort of bump well, or you're something wrong phil they can tell it without a biopsy Hey, Alex, are you still doing this? There's the a new test no? called a 4K test. Did they tell you about that? What, they stick 
the fork up the. No, it's a, it's <laughs> oh, I didn't know about it. I don't have a prostate. 4K anymore. test. I and it's, it's a new test they okay. have where they can see if it's aggressive or not without doing a biopsy. Alex, oh. are you still doing the bicycle? Uh, not right now because I don't want to do it until after this test. You should do uh, the elliptical. Replace that with a bicycle. I like the elliptical. No, I, you know what I've been doing instead of. And do it backwards. What I've been doing is a lot of walking. That's uh, good for you. Know, good I, I, yeah, I, I, I found I was getting a little bored with the cycle. I'll probably go back to it after I, after I, after my prostate. Uh, I've actually been watching. Watch a lot of TV. What, what were you saying, John? Uh, I said yeah. I've actually been watching a lot of TV. I feel pretty good about it. Oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and, and you're seeing a lot of foreign countries and things like that, are you? And, yeah. Well, no. The thing yeah. is that I, you know, you, I just you just get a little, a little tired of, um, you know. We do travel okay. a lot. And we'll actually be gone next week. We are actually going on a trip next week. Where are you going? I'm going speak? to Washington D.C. for four or five days. Ah. Okay. Did you see uh, the tasteless thing that President Trump did today? He does he's, nothing tasteless. He opened his mouth. Jesus, Phil, can I just finish a sentence? He French kissed Phil. Forget it. Go tell the story that I was going to tell. I didn't know the story you were going to tell. Well, I just then said why, he does did you, why did you jump in? Because I just made a comment that he doesn't do anything tasteless. He can't help it. You anyway. said it was tasteless. I said then that's not. Back to running down You Trump. don't Let's always have to be playing your part, Phil. Ah, you know. <laughs> We know we Actually, hired you to play a role on this show, but you don't have to play it all the time. Okay. Anyway, uh, he published a picture. One of his tweets was a picture of the 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 dog that uh, caught what's his Bagdad. name? Uh, you know, uh, the other guy, Baghdad. Baghdad. Who's your Baghdad? Um, uh, and uh, I call it a dog. Some people call it a canine, but I call it a dog. I call it a dog. Yeah, that was he did say that. I think some people call it a canine. I call it a dog. It was a beautiful dog. <laughs> anyway, he, nine he, lives. he he published a picture of him putting the Medal of Honor around the dog's neck. <laughs> the dog was in the hospital. No, that's another dog. There were two dogs. Um, yeah. Is this and, the one that had the dog cam? Well, can I finish, Phil? Please. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Allow me to finish. Yeah, sure. Gosh. I'm just trying to tell the story and just let me finish it without interruption here. So he's got this picture of him putting the Medal of Honor around the dog's neck. What they did to get the picture was they took a picture of him giving the Medal of Honor to, I can't remember who, but some guy recently who won the Medal of Honor as a great distinction, and they erased him out of the picture and put the dog in. And somebody and people thought that that was in just terribly bad taste. Yes, Patrick? Who fucking cares? Well. <laughs> and furthermore, it was not the Medal of Honor because they did change the actual medal to a dog paw. So... Yeah. Eliminating the guy out of the photo, who cares? If you look at any number of memes that are out there, mm -hmm. they've been bastardized and changed. And now the only reason this one got any notice at all is because Trump's in trouble. Usually the Democrats could give a fuck about the military or the Medal of Honor. And now just because of what's happening... It's Imagine if it was Obama and they altered a picture. What yeah, the Republicans give so much fucks about the military. Say, imagine if it was Obama and they altered a picture with a Medal of Honor. Well, I would say Dude, he would be impeached for that. I would say the same thing. Now, who cares? They altered you the would. birth certificate. You would, but Phil wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, wow. the dog. Big, big fucking deal, and and I would be, I would ever, I I would have, but <clears throat> if they didn't change the metal, but the metal would change to a dog paw, so it wasn't even really, even a, uh, uh, 
a medal of honor. It's just, you yeah. know, I mean, big fucking deal. I, there's other things to worry about than that. And Why is it not a medal of honor? Are you a speciesist? <laughs> <laughs> it's just because it's a dog can't get a medal of honor? Jeez. <laughs> well, you know, Due to global warming. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Right, right. right <laughs> And I saw who was going apoplectic over it. And I thought, normally you guys don't give a shit about the Medal of Honor anyway. So well, what, 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 makes you, what, what makes you say that? What do you mean, you That's guys? Just Republican propaganda. Do you think the Democrats don't care about a person who uh, does an act it's of terrorism? It's not person, Alex, a dog. Yes. Well, I base it on what I've seen with people posting. And I know I... I have my own little bubble of friends on Facebook, but like this last Medal of Honor that was given yesterday to a uh, master sergeant mm -hmm. from 2008, uh, I was the only one out of the friends that I was able to see that posted about it. And I've got about five friends that are on the right and everybody is on the left. And I got about six likes on the, the, the story. Mm -hmm. And that just tells me that people look at shit like that and they go, oh, it's the military, just fuck it. And I'm like, you know, this guy could have been a Democrat, the, the uh, master sergeant, and it doesn't matter. You know, it, it, so I, I think like that, and the same with, with uh, Al Baghdadi, his death, I posted Good job, special operators. I had nothing about Trump. I had nothing about anyone else. And there were maybe two or three other people that I knew of mm -hmm. that posted about getting rid of that cowardly fucking terrorist. And yes, he was a coward and he died like a bitch and a dog and all that. <laughs> <laughs> he died like a dog. <laughs> I mean, how did he die like a dog? I don't understand that. Exactly. Whining and crying. Wait a minute, whining and crying. Were and then they, he were, pulled the cord and worse, killed himself. Yeah, wait a like minute. A dog. Hold on a second. The, the only thing that I hold against him is that he pulled the the uh, uh, cord on the Rip. on the uh, suicide vest with his two kids there. That yeah. That, no, that his that kids was. pulled the own cords too. Did they? That's I, that's what I heard. But the point is that I, I thought that that was wrong, that was bad, okay? But so far as committing suicide with a suicide vest, I don't know if that exactly, I'm going to go back to Bill Maher and his statement about the guys who flew the planes into the World Trade Center. He said, you know, his whole thing was somebody called them cowards, and he said they, they may be a lot of things. They may be horrible human beings. But you can't call somebody who flies a plane into a building and takes his own life a coward. You know, I think and wait a minute, let me finish, Phil. Cowards. I'm not finished, Phil. I'm not finished. The fact is, the, the fact that this guy blew up himself with a suicide vest doesn't exactly make him a coward. He's still an asshole. He was still a terrible human yeah. being. He was still a worthless human being whose life I'm not mourning in the least. But the fact is, I don't know if I could call him a coward. Yes, you can, because he ref he wasn't facing uh, his adversaries. That, who were that's going the bravest to thing him. you can do is take your own life. Uh, I don't think taking your own life is brave at all. I think it is a cowardly act. Nah, well, what about no. the, the soldier that jumps on the grenade saving his whole right? platoon? That's not suicide. That's a hero. Well, that's suicide. No, it's it, not. It's, it, but, but Phil, saving, you got to you got to remember, Phil. One person, one person's terrorist is another person's freedom fighter. You know, that's, that's the, right. Yeah, you believe that? No, that is true, Phil. It's the truth. I might not agree with the person and what they're doing, but what they're doing is taking their own life. You know, that that's not, that's, that's not a cowardice thing. I might not agree with it, but... He was going to be captured, and rather than be captured, he blew himself so up. He was yeah. going to be and captured. That's, that's not a he cowardly was going to be captured act. when he decided to take a plane and crash it into a building. He wasn't going to be captured then. He was going to be some rich little... Oh, those guys are crazy. Uh, well, I don't. Yeah, I don't know that he's going to be captured, and I don't know that it matters for the semantics the of this. The dog argument, was on his way down there. But I, I don't know that he was going to be captured. I mean, I, I think, I guess my point of the whole thing about them talking about how he died and all that, and I know Patrick is going to agree with this. 
when a special op team of SEALs goes in like that and you're on the kill list, they're not looking to take you alive. You're on the <laughs> kill list. They're looking to put a bullet in your head, not in your chest, because they think you're wearing a suicide vest. They don't have time to let you beg for your life or anything. They're not taking any chances. You enter the room, there's a male enemy combatant, he's getting a bullet. It's as simple as that. I mean, they, you know, they're, uh, it, you're on the kill list. So and, it, and to be quite honest, I have no problem with that. They I went mean, there to kill him. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. So, like I said, I don't even know that the point matters for what you guys were discussing, but... I don't think they go into the building looking to take all. All he managed to do. All, with, all he managed okay, to do was lot. was deprive them of the satisfaction of taking him alive, okay, yeah. or or killing, or killing him themselves. Right. No, uh, I agree and, with that. And yeah. the fact that he deprived him of that does not make him a coward. You know. Now his children would not have been uh, held responsible for his actions. So why kill them? I kill don't know that that's true. true. Yeah. Would, would it be more Phil? They, they were say? young children, weren't they? They weren't like Hussein and Hussein. I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah. But well, I, I don't know that, that, that the special operations team would be looking to take them out, you know. I mean, he he did that, you know, on his own, which is which is which is sickening. You know, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I've I've read quite a lot about this. I mean, not just watch the Hollywood glorified movies, but I mean I just know that her training they go into a room and any male of an adult age jumps out from behind anything you know it's they're they're going down i mean they're not they're not going to try to take people alive and there certainly wouldn't have been time to you know listen to him beg for his life and please don't kill me and no i'm sorry if you have a shot you t you, you this is not the, this is not the police there's not going to be any trial <laughs> you know this is a pre-authorized kill and that that's the that's and the I, end of the story. And I think and, you know, I th like I said, I'm yeah. I'm a bit of a defense hawk despite my, my liberalism. Yeah, well I, I think I that no his I that. think that his decision uh, to use the suicide vest and to kill himself was a decision that he probably made well in advance of that uh, incident. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that he decided if he was ever cornered he was gonna pull the the, the switch on himself. Because right. he didn't want to, A, be caught. He didn't want to have happen to him what happened to um, um, uh, Saddam Hussein. Saddam, no, not Saddam Hussein. Uh, uh, they hung him, right? Hmm? They hung him. No, we're not talking about Saddam Hussein, I know, Phil. Yeah, but Bin Laden was bin killed Laden, in a raid. He was killed in a raid. He didn't, I don't and he think was buried he, at sea. I don't think he wanted that to happen, although they have buried uh, Baghdadi at sea, too. Right, yeah. yeah. And, and and that's the other part of the in the same in the same vein, mm -hmm. you know, a special operations team, a SEAL team, or whatever that goes in, they're not going to take even fifteen seconds of satisfaction to let you beg for your life, you know. And the reason why is because, you know, by the point by this point in the raid, there are a lot of people that are aware that you're there and what you're there for. There are more fucking bad guys coming. I mean, we need to do the fucking job, and then we need to get the yeah. fuck out of here. Because two we have the numbers right now, but there are more fucking bad guys on the way, and we need to do what we came here to do, and then we're fucking getting out of here the, before they the show The SEAL up. teams were there for over two hours collecting intel uh, from the uh, from. Well, the I mean, if, if 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 they secured the site, and I'm you know obviously we're positive, you know that they had drone coverage and all that. I mean, if they if they had the time, sure, that's fine. But you know, like in the Bin Laden raid, for example. There, it, yeah. it was in a pretty heavily populated area, and there's yep. no doubt there's more fucking bad guys on the way. As much as we'd like to all stick around and cut off Bin Laden's fingers before we put a bullet in his head, we don't have any fucking time for that. <laughs> I mean, there's just, there's fucking people on the way, and when we lose our numbers advantage, you know, that raid would not be thought of as well as it is currently. Well, let me, let me ask we'd you. We'd have brought Bin Laden yeah. back with six or seven dead seals. Let me ask you this question. What is the, uh, what is the... Uh, sense of of capturing the guy alive. Intel. Yeah. Intel. Uh, or yeah. Didn't the, the blind sheik give up a whole bunch of intel when they uh, got him and uh, all lie uh, all lies. Yeah. Yeah. All lies. Uh, they found his t his stuff totally unreliable. But that was the thing that they were talking about during World War II, that you got more intel off your captured uh, prisoners if you played chess with but them here, than if you tortured the them. If you take a person like bin Laden and you capture him alive, what do you do with him? 
You know, I mean, you, right. you it's, you, it's, it, you're, you're better off to kill him and not yeah. have to deal with the aftermath. You get what I'm saying? You know, especially if he's a CIA yeah. spy. Yeah. Uh, P- uh, Patrick. Yeah, high up like that, the head, they're not going to give anything up. You, you, you may get intel from lower rank people, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. yeah, it, it, you're right. It, just eliminate them and be done with it. What not if they think they might live. They might give you give you up stuff if you they think that they might live and might get away well, with something. Well, you know what he, hey. what he was supposedly doing in that region, because he doesn't normally go to that region, but he went there because he was going around to tell everybody that he was getting out of the business, you know, that he was turning the reins of power over to other people. They killed that guy, too, the second in command. No, they didn't. Yeah, there's a new yeah, there guy another... who today was made the uh, the head of uh, no, I know that Elisis. guy, but he must have been the third. It was the second in command was in the same uh, air, uh, thing and got killed in a separate raid at the same time. The, the, the second in command does not necessarily become the leader. You know why, Phil? Uh, what do you have to be in order to be a leader of ISIS? A sick motherfucker. No. <laughs> That's what. That's the answer you give because you don't know it. Why don't you say? I, I, why don't you I, say I, I don't know, Alex? Why don't you say I don't know, Alex? Tell me. Well, I, I never ran for that position, and you know, wouldn't you rather have that than dead air? I'd rather have dead air. Anyway, <laughs> the reason is, Phil, that uh, now I forgot what I was coming up with here. The reason. Oh, oh that yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, in order to be the leader of ISIS. You have to be a descendant of Muhammad. Oh, wow. And this latest guy, they looked at his name and everything, and he is now, he is a descendant of Muhammad as well. The guy who you said was second in command may not have been a descendant of Muhammad. Was Abraham a relative of, oh- of Muhammad? No. No? Okay, so we're out. We can't be leaders of ISIS? <laughs> you no. can't. It's like no, a gangster. No, no, you no, can't no, be a mafia. Uh, that's 100%. I, uh, 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 Abraham. What do you mean? Can't Abraham, be leaders of it. Who do you think really has been? It's Abraham, been the Jewish elite. Abraham went to to Mecca and built the Kaaba, which is that big black yeah. cube. He and his son built that. I thought but, Halliburton just redid it. And the 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 uh, the origins of the Islamic religion is in fact with Abraham, and uh, and his uh, son who was uh, uh, um, Strauss. Jesus. No. Come on. No, you know, you throw me <laughs> off and then I can't think. Well, he was saying, well, his son. Just shut up for a minute. All right. I'll see you later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna hang up. Okay. Right. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the son. The son was Ishmael. Ishmael was the son. And Ishmael was, ba- was he and his mother were b- banished. Uh, because uh, Abraham's mother was jealous of them. And they were banished, and they went to Mecca. And when they were in Mecca, uh, they uh, Abraham joined them, and they built the Kaaba. So that's the... Uh, in Melville's Mobile Dick, wasn't the guy character Ishmael? I think it yes, was, right? Yes, he was. Call me Ishmael. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so... I was going to ask you something, too. Do you think they have a mental illness to want to kill themselves? There's got to be some kind of mental disorder to no, want to take No, it's, 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 um, it's foolish uh, adulation to a, to a cause. You know, I mean... Um, Just to get to that point, they want to take your life. Like, what kind of frame of mind? Cultism. Yeah. We have the same thing going you, you on here know, every you know single what day. I, cultism. What I, what I found, there's got to be a mental disorder. You know, what I found yeah. incredibly disgusting is over the years how they've used these people who really have nothing to live for uh, as suicide bombs you know uh, uh, and they, none of them go out and scrap a bomb to themselves and go out right. and and do the same thing no they go and seduce somebody into doing it uh, yeah Patrick first and then uh, yeah yes. uh, and that's the reason that I call him a coward. He mm. is taking his own kids out with him. I find that abominable. Yeah, I think you yeah. People call him a, a wussy motherfucker, but 
he just taken himself out, and he going to, he being a martyr for whatever he believes in. Mm -hmm. But take your kids out. It's no different than somebody taking a hostage in a bank robbery. Mm -hmm. you know, you you just you're pushing. You're using somebody else as a human shield, or you know you're gonna take them with you because whatever reason. So right. That's why I call it. Yeah, there, that that is, uh, I think, absolutely wrong, you know. And, and uh, uh, you know, I, you can call him anything you want to. I think he's a disgusting human being just for what he did many years ago. ISIS was literally throwing people off of buildings because they were gay, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it's disgusting, and it's all in the name of religion. This is why I'm not religious, because religion just does horrible things, yeah. you know. Uh, and and uh, uh, I, I, I just think that our biggest problem in this world is religion, is organized religion. Uh, and it's the, it's, it's the reason we have, I mean, why, why do people do the things that, uh, that ISIS does? It's all in the name of religion. Yeah. It's a crazy thing. Yeah, if you why think does about Israel it? do what they do? It's all in the name of religion. You know? They don't realize when they close their eyes, we're all going to the same place if it exists, I would imagine. I mean, it's so crazy thinking that you're going to go someplace different because all bodies are all the same. It's like they can't rationally think that. Like, well, listen, well, the, ins all, the, ins the insanity that I just can't make any sense out of is the hatred between the Jews and the Islamics when they share the same root religion. They are and both monos they are Jews. Both what do you think? Islam's Christians. It's a different same. Same. They are both monotheistic religions, you know. They both believe in, you know, they've got treif and we've got kosher. It's pretty much the same it's thing, same. you yeah. know. Uh, and and it's kind of like two two women who show up at a party wearing the same dress, you know, and they just hate each other because they're so similar. Yes, it's, Jason. Uh, it's kind of so wild. is Christianity even monotheistic? It, it is monotheistic. Yeah. Is it because well, you it, in God some, the Father, some, some God people, the Son, and it, God it, the Holy well, Spirit? Well, that is the place where people feel maybe it isn't monotheistic because it's the Mother, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And okay. it takes it just takes Three so much from other religions God. that they've gone and conquered. Yeah, yeah. So I'm in, uh, but um, Jesus is Thor, or you know other religions is uh, another character you know and that's it's yeah. two different gods three different gods it's yeah, yeah. It, 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 but it, it's just insane and it's insane the war that we're if the, if we are going to see the end of civilization as we know it it's because of all these religions fighting with each other you know and and i find that horrible just horrible phil do you have anything you want to add it's don't tell me he's going to be a, he's going to, no. he's going to convert now. Yeah? What? Who? Phil, he's going to convert to ISIS. <laughs> what is he doing? Uh -oh. Yeah, well, we could tell me he's coming to the Catholic. Charlie has his hand up. Well, well, yes, Charlie. Mm -hmm. I was raised Catholic, and we were always taught that there is one God. There are three people in one God, but it's just one God. Yeah. 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 Yes, uh, 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 Jason. So, Charlie, I want to ask you this because I got in a, I, I shouldn't have even brought it up with my job because it was at work. I was doing a job for a, a black customer, and they were extremely religious, but I ended up bringing up the only reason why you are a Christian is because your ancestors were slaves to white people, and you are still worshiping your white master's god. I, I just like was that very offensive like like how how do you feel about cause well, yeah, like, that, that's what that that's what got me to atheism I'm Mexican why are my gods not real you're gonna need a future in floor covering sales yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it was just you know it just just be able to say you know your ancestors were enslaved by certain people, and that's why you're Christians. That's the only reason why you're Christians is because you were enslaved by white people. And now they you're... wouldn't see it that way. They yeah. would see it as there, there's this is the one true God, and just because some white person exposed 
my ancestors to it doesn't make them any less the one true God. Well, you know what I don't understand, and, and this is the hypocrisy of it all. I can't understand why the Christians in this country have embraced Donald Trump, when in fact Me? this is one of the most unchristian people that I've yeah. ever seen in my life. I mean, I don't know many believes in anything, really. Probably. How many baby mamas does he have? <laughs> Jesus yeah, Christ. Well, to begin you with, he's got, holy he's got three up. baby mamas. There's three of them. Yeah. Well, you know why, Alex? Maybe because, you remember, he was saying we're, we're going to bring go. Christmas back. He, he preaches what they want to hear, those Bible preachers. Yeah, but, but, but he isn't doing what he preaches. No, he's I mean, he's going he's he's, to grab no, him by the talking. pussy, and he's going to marry three women and have children by all three of them. You know. He's probably paid for a dozen abortions. <laughs> was pro life. Yeah, so I mean, how I think Christian. You're, you're, you're estimating low. How, I still how, can't believe it. How could a Christian possibly. Uh, uh, go along with that, you know. I just don't understand it's, it. And they vote for him. Like um, it's, he's everything they oppose. Because you much. know, when I hear about yeah. Christianity and what Christianity believes and the teachings of Christ, I go, "Hey, this is pretty good stuff." You know, love thy neighbor and all that yeah. other stuff. Well, yeah. And and I guess maybe Trump just took it too seriously. Yes, and you Patrick. cannot bear false witnesses, and he lies all the time. Uh, yeah, that's his whole cabinet. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Patrick. Yeah. I covered thy wife. He did that. Yeah. He checked on yeah. And other people's wives. Yeah. What well, were you going to say quickly, Patrick, because we're running out of time? Christians are very forgiving, and they love thy neighbor, even if it is Donald Trump. I see. Okay. They but, love thy neighbor's wife. I don't know. As, as, yeah. a, as a Christian, I don't think I could abide by, by Trump, but yet they vote for him, and they invite him to their their big, you know, Christian daily bops, whatever those things are, they hold. And that that was the best term I could come up with right now. Uh, but uh, anyway, I don't know. Oh well, uh, let me see here. Let me start rolling the theme. I may as well because well, it's, Katie Hill didn't do anything different than Melania Trump did. Uh, who who didn't do anything different? Congresswoman Hill from California. Oh, I, just was I, forced out of the I don't think she should have quit. I just don't think she should have quit. I, I don't think that was enough to quit mm -hmm. on, you know. Plus, she was set up by her ex-husband, who was yeah. trying to trying to get at her. So, she shouldn't have quit. Just like I don't think uh, a lot of people shouldn't have quit. Yeah. You know. Uh, hey, listen, that's it uh, for tonight. Uh, uh, short show because we had problems uh, earlier, and mm -hmm. uh, I hate problems. So. You know, that's the way it goes. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate you calling tonight. It's always good to see you. Josh, great to see you. Phil, always fine to see you. Uh, 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 thank you for shutting up for the last couple of minutes. Uh, uh, Jeff, thank you. Uh, thanks to Tony, to Charlie, to Patrick. Did I leave anybody else? Jeff, did I say Jeff? Yeah. yeah? I got everybody. I got everybody. Why doesn't everybody... Like, give a big wave goodbye, okay? All right? Goodbye, everybody. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, we got on a little late tonight, but it uh, turned out to be a rather... What was it? It was a show of some sort. <laughs> no, it was a good one. It had a lot of things going for it. Anyway, I'm uh, running out of uh, time here. Uh, let me just say that I will be back again tomorrow night after the exchange because tomorrow night Damian Chapman will be doing it at 9.30 Eastern Time. And then at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, I'll be back with more of the same here at GabNet. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, here at GabNet, I will be here with more of the same. That's 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>